Hi guys and welcome to this video. You most probably have come across one of these impossible pass-through objects. Today I'm going to show you how you can do your own designs in Autodesk Fusion. It's actually not that hard if you follow my process. And in the end I will also show you how you can apply joints so that you can have it move like I am showing on the screen right now. But first things first. I start with a sketch on the top plane, which will determine the interface cross-section of the two parts. I start with a few construction elements. I draw a circle, which defines the largest diameter of the interface section. Then I draw two lines that limit the area I am actually going to draw out. The rest of the profile will be constructed by mirroring and patterning. I chose to have 8-fold symmetry and I only want to sketch half of the profile. So for the angle I enter 360 by 16 equals 22.5 degrees. Then I sketch the actual profile. I start off with two circles and connect them with a tangent line. Notice that I want to have a tangent constraint at both ends of the line. Then I choose suitable diameters for the circles and move back the small circle to where it belongs. I add another dimension to fully constrain the small circle. Now that there are no blue lines left, so everything is fully constrained, I trim all the portions of the circles I do not need. Fusion comes up with a constraint removal warning, but everything still seems to be fine. Now I choose symmetry to mirror the profile. By double clicking I select the whole chain, then I choose the upper construction line as mirror line. And I have finished one, let's call it fin, of the profile I have in mind. I want to have multiple of these, of course, so now I choose circular pattern. Again, by double clicking I select the original as well as the mirrored chain before selecting the center point. Now I enter the number of instances I want to have. Remember I decided for 8 full symmetry already and hit OK. We can see that Fusion managed to well fuse these chains perfectly. This is why the interior of the now closed profile is colored differently and can be selected as a whole. Feel free to pause the video and have a closer look at the sketch. As the view might be a little crowded with all the symmetry constraints, let me quickly show you the sketch before mirroring and patterning again. By the way, if you find this video helpful so far, consider liking and subscribing or even supporting me, details in the description. I finished the sketch and the next thing I need is a guide for the twisted extrusion I have in mind. For that I create a coil. I select the top plane as reference and draw a circle that is slightly larger than my sketch. I want to have a small triangular section just for clarity and choose a height that is at least as large as the object I want to design. For printability we choose a rather large pitch value, in this case 100 mm. Colors were turned on from before so I quickly fixed that. Now I want to extrude the initial profile along the coil. This is exactly what the sweep command does. It is important though to select the path and guide surface option here. I select the profile as profile, one edge of the coil as path and the top plane as guide surface. This gives me the exact body I had in mind. I will not need the coil anymore, so I remove it after right clicking on the coil body. Now I want to create the base body for my pass through object. I will do a simple cone with a rounded top, so I start with a sketch on the front plane. I hide the pre-existing sketch and body for clarity. Then I sketch the section. I created the rounded top by just holding and dragging while using the line tool. After finishing the sketch I choose revolve. As I have not converted the center line into an axis in the sketch, I have to select the axis manually. I choose the new body option. Now I combine the bodies I've just created. I select the cone as the target body and the spiral as the tool body. I want to start with the outer part of the cone, so I choose remove. As I want to reuse the spiral body in the next step, I check keep tools. When I hide it, this body I've just created already looks pretty much like what I want to have. For the second body I recreate the cone, again as new body. Notice that for your designs, the second base body does not have to be the same of course. By following the rest of the process, you could literally make any other base body go through this cone. I again combine the base body with the spiral, only now I choose the intersect option. Also I will not use the tool body again, so I uncheck keep tools. 
Now I have a closer look at the resulting bodies and they seem to fit perfectly. I rename them for clarity. Then I create components from the bodies by right clicking on the bodies node. Now I also reactivate component coloring in the inspect menu. The outer cone got fixed in space automatically, but I can now move the inner cone freely just by dragging it around. We will see how to constrain the movement at the end of the video. At this point the geometry of my parts is finished, except for the clearance. I will most probably need some to be able to move the parts through each other freely. As offset face or push will not work well for these complex faces, I will demonstrate two other ways of adding clearance. The easiest option is probably to defer the clearance to the slicer. I am using Prusa slicer here and add both components to my build plate. You can see that there now is no clearance. If printed in place, the parts would certainly fuse together and even printed separately, they would definitely not move through each other. I shrink both parts by setting a negative XY size compensation in the advanced print settings. Notice that this is fundamentally different from scaling the parts. Also, the cone will shrink overall, which at the top leads to the empty layer warning. After reslicing, we can see the added clearances. So this cone should be printable even in place. I dared to print it in place, but had at least some issues separating the parts due to the imperfect seams. You could also manually move the seams to uncritical areas, but generally I'd advise to print the parts separately. So I moved them apart for reslicing. Now we are actually ready to print. If I want to avoid the XY size compensation and have a perfectly proper CAD model in Fusion, I can also add the clearances here before slicing. I go back to the initial sketch. Here I select offset and select all chains of the profile. I offset everything to the inside by the clearance value I want to have, in this case 0.3 mm. Then I roll back the timeline to just after the first sweeping. Here I add another sweeping just as before. The only difference is that now I only select the inner profile I've just added to the sketch. I again choose the new body option. Notice that this new body is slightly smaller than the pre-existing one. Now I move the timeline to when I combine the bodies for the first time. Here I uncheck keep tools. After moving the timeline to the very end, I added the second combine. No error was shown despite the now missing tool body. I select the new smaller spiral body as tool and hit OK. Let's have a look at the result. It looks fine just like I intended and I can still move the inner cone freely in space. Now let's constrain the movement. I select as built joint from the assemble menu and choose the two components. The joint type should be cylindrical. As snap point I select the center of the base by clicking on the edge of the circular face. The preview motion already looks quite promising. What is left to do is to couple the two degrees of freedom using a motion link. I select the joint and then check link with same joint. As distance I enter the pitch of the initial coil which was 100 mm. The reference angle is set to 360 degrees. The animation shows that these values fit the geometry. The model is finished now and we can either slice and print it without any further adjustments or choose to play with the model virtually like I am doing now. I hope you are happy with your results and found this helpful. Feel free to share any feedback in the comments. Have a great time designing and prototyping.